be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Episode 9, Part 2. Um, I'm Dennis Gebhardt with Guru Nation, and this is my partner in crime, my co-host of the show, Max Massiano. Max, how you doing, brother? Hey, man. I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm all good. Uh, we did that first portion of this episode, which I thought was really beneficial. If you are just tuning into this episode, uh, this part of it, go back and listen to part one. And I think you'll find it's a lot of little nuggets, a little uh, what uh, Max calls uh, educational bombs or knowledge bombs that you can take and use. It'll uh, help you kind of carve out that pathway to success. In this part of our program, we're going to actually take the words from the educators who are, who are teaching online and just actually present those words and then, then share with you our perception because we find that uh, a lot of times people that call themselves educators and they're excited about sharing their knowledge, <clears throat> but they're not totally grounded. So as a result of that, Sometimes the information that we get is skewed. And, um, and when it becomes skewed like that, it creates more confusion. So our goal is to help, uh, you know, clear some of the air, give you some information that you can depend upon. For those of you that have never watched us before, if you're watching for the first time, uh, we are a, a brand neutral company, educational company. Um, basically, we're all about the facts, the science, um, strategies and techniques and behaviors that will help you become more successful. We always start this part of the program off with a waiver saying, look, we are not here to be where our plan is not to be condescending, although we do have fun. You know, and if you're in education and you're putting it out there in the public forum, you should be able to laugh at yourself, too. All right. That's all part of growth, internal growth. So we're going to have fun with it. Um, we're not meaning to be condescending. We're not meaning to contradict your belief systems. However, honestly, sometimes that happens simply because it's the truth versus a tale. And so we want to verify that. <clears throat> and we want to give you the information. And then you can do what you would like with that information. Um, our goal is to help raise the bar for everyone but it's also to clear confusion. I'll give you a fine example this morning because I was preparing for this program. Uh, I just happened to jump onto social media. <laughs> Should have stayed off of it. And um, there's a forum that, that I'm part of that I spend time in. Uh, I don't comment. You know, Some of the forums I stay away, I don't comment because I don't want to rock the boat. But uh, uh, someone m mentioned, um, there's a difference between book learning and actual learning. I know in the book they say you can't do this, but I have people who do these things in the salon and it works. And what they were talking about, Max, was the mixing of 10 volume and 30 volume to make 20 volume. <laughs> and they go, it works. Uh, and you know, the funny thing is, and they were totally they pushed back. They were giving blowback to whoever was saying you can't measure it accurately. They were right. You cannot, mm -hmm. um, you can't, you can't, it's impossible for you to know what you've created when you're using cream developers impossible because you can't measure them. So, you know, it shows there are people who are resistant to what we share. There are people who say, I don't care. It works for me and I'm going to continue to do that. And that's your right. Good for you, rock and roll. But here's what I would say to you. When color goes sideways, and I promise you, every one of you who's watching this program have had a color go sideways on you. Every one of you, unless you've never laid a hand on hair color. You know, and the longer you've been doing it, the more sideways journeys you've had because that's the way you gain wisdom. So <clears throat> we know some of this information may not taste good, you know, sometimes I think to quote from a uh, um, from Sandra Bullock from a football movie she did, you know, sometimes it tastes like vinegar. <laughs> the truth tastes like vinegar, doesn't taste good, but it's the truth nevertheless. So we're going to ask that you just uh, 
allow us to share with you our perceptions. Like I said, we're not here to change your mind. We're here to provoke your thought process. Just think about it. We just want you to think about it and see, see if it makes sense. So I think that set us up for safety. Do you think, Max? I'm feeling pretty <laughs> secure right now. <laughs> okay. But most importantly, let's have some fun, okay? Yes. I mean, because it is funny. Sometimes we say the craziest things, right? Sometimes we just words don't come out of our mouth the way we expect them to. Um, you know, there's been so many times when I've, like, I wished I was able to catch the words in the air as I, they released from my mouth and yeah. put them back in, because that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. So um, I want to start off with a, um, a highly successful influencer on Instagram. <laughs> now you're all going, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to share with you a question that was asked of this person and how they answered it. And then I'm going to ask my partner here to kind of share with me his perceptions of this. And uh, then I'm going to share mine. So here was the question. It says, so many levels of developer I see. There's five volume. There's nine volume. There's 10 volume. There's 13 volume. There's 20 volume. Okay. And the said, so at what point does the lift does it actually lighten the hair? Does the lift, does it lift hair? That was the point of the question. Let me repeat it. So many levels of developers I see. I see five volume, I see 10 volume, I see 15 volume, I see 20 volume. At what point does it lift the hair? Asking, you know, what, are all these volumes effective or not? Here was the question, here was the answer. Developer doesn't lift the hair. <laughs> now, I just want you to just take five seconds and let that percolate in your head. This is a highly regarded influencer on Instagram. Has hundreds of thousands of hairdressers following this person from around the world. And this person says, developer doesn't lift the hair. And it's not only here that we've heard it, we've seen it from other people on social media. Um, we'll have another clip for you, a vocal clip. You'll be able to hear someone saying that, actually an educator actually saying that on social media. And actually, Max, I'd really like to put this to bed today as far as here it is. Here are the facts. So my partner, my friend, <clears throat> Talk to me. Give me some words of wisdom. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this for a minute. Two things you need to know. One, uh, if you just take straight developer and put it on the hair, not much is going to happen. And then conversely, what we've been hearing a lot is the lift is in the tube. If you take straight color out of the tube or the bottle, and you put it on the hair by itself, also, not much is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So, what we can surmise here is that if you are mixing A and B together, then something happens, right? Yes. So, yes. you have to have in any color, whether it's demi permanent or permanent. An alkalizer. Yes. An alkalizer, you can kind of think of as the engine in a car. Some shades have a four cylinder and some shades have a supercharger. <laughs> I <Okay>? like that. <laughs> Your developer is the gas. Yeah. So it's actually the interaction between the alkalizer and the developer that causes the liberation of oxygen from that developer. We also call that oxidation. So it's actually oxygen, freed oxygen, that starts to, in some cases, break down the pigment structure of the hair. Now, a lot of times in the case of 
most demi-permanent colors, you can't see that happening, which is where sometimes they, they're, they get called no lift colors or deposit mm -hmm. only colors. Right. It's not enough for the naked eye to see right. usually, right. okay? Then with permanent color, depending on you know, how much alkalizer is in that particular shade, typically the higher the level number of the shade, the more alkalizer, less dye you're gonna get. So you're gonna create a lot more free oxygen. Mm -hmm. But if, if out of this whole <laughs> tirade I'm going <coughs> on, you guys take <laughs> one thing, it is oxygen that lightens the hair. It's not developer and it's not ammonia or MEA or AMP, it is oxygen. But when you mix a developer or activator, whatever that company calls it, with a color, you are liberating oxygen from that developer in some degree. Totally different if you're using a semi-permanent straight out of the tube onto the head, that's a direct dye, no lift. Right. That's the only true no lift hair color. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> you know, I, I think it's a great, uh, a great analogy that you used. I mean, for those people that understand carburetors you could also use that couldn't you yeah it, you got the engine okay four cylinder six cylinder v8 but then you also have a carburetor the carburetor allows how much fuel will be delivered and burned in the engine so you have two barrel carburetors which is adequate and then you have the four barrel carburetor Mm -hmm. Four barrel carburetor releasing tons of fuel, really making that engine roar. Okay. And, and, and those of you who have ever owned a car that had a small carburetor, you know, acceleration was not one of the benefits <laughs> of that car. <laughs> and if you ever owned a big car, you know, this acceleration was a great benefit, but gas <laughs> guzzling was the downside of that. I think what we're trying to do here, and Max, you, you really pointed it out clearly, is to get us to understand that words can be very confusing because we send in words we receive in pictures. And so when someone says to me, um, the peroxide cannot lighten the hair without hair color, then sometimes I think, well, then the peroxide's not as important as the hair color is, so the lift must be in the tube. Right. I think that's where that whole thing started. And I will, I will take responsibility for a lot of that initial belief system because that was, a, hopefully that was an easy way to get people to understand that what we were trying to say was, it depends on what you mix the peroxide with. As Max said, it won't do zip if it does not get exposed to alkalinity and alkalinity is the environment, that's what the color provides. Now here's what's interesting. And you heard Max say this is that the lighter the shade of color, the higher the ratio of alkalinity that is provided. So we know if I mix peroxide with an alkaline color, there's going to be that, that chemical action is called oxygen release, freed or liberated oxygen. If I mix it with a, a tremendous amount of alkalinity, I will enable that peroxide to release more oxygen than I expect it to. That's why we all believe five volume, right? Is mm -hmm. deposit only, it can't lighten hair. Nonsense. It can. Get yourself a piece of hair, you know, when you do haircut this week. Okay, take it and mix it with, a, mix five volume with bleach and put it on that hair. And come back and check it in 15 minutes. Yeah. You'll have lift. I think another just kind of simple way of kind of saying this to, to take it back to the car thing is you can have a car with the really you know, kick an engine, but if you have no gas in the car, it's not gonna go anywhere. 
That's right. And you can have, you can own a whole gas station, but if you don't have a car to put the gas in, the right. gas isn't going to go anywhere either. You right. got to, you, you have to have both. It's that marriage. Yeah. It's that marriage. So hopefully we can stop saying, and you've all heard me say this, and I had someone who took our rabbit trails from last week, Max, and they said, well, Dennis Gebhardt says that the lift is not in the tube. Either you're right. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> because the job of peroxide in the color process, it has three functions. There's only three things that peroxide does in the color process that are actually its job. One, it prepares. That's why when people say there's no lift, there must be lift. Even in a demi-permanent color, there must be a change slightly in the structure of the hair. Because remember, the cortex, the cuticle, those are pretty much solid masses. So if I want to add something to that mass, I have to make room for it. Right. So even though we say it's like, we should be saying it's mostly deposit. And I think that might make it more clear. Even at that, we have to understand is that one, it prepares and by preparing, it's changing the structure of the hair. The second thing that peroxide does is it delivers. It delivers those dye intermediates into the hair strand. And the third thing that it does is it develops. And it helps us in developing those dye intermediates into what we visually see at the end as a color molecule. That's all the peroxide is there for. Right. It's a driving force to help get that color in the hair. But without peroxide, you cannot lift hair. You can take color from a level 10 hair color or even a high lift tent. You can paint it on a swatch of hair. You can go have lunch. You can go have dinner. You can come back the next morning and zip has occurred. Why? Because you did not have any gas in your car. <laughs> All right. So Better call AAA. Amen. So hopefully we got that cleared up. I just think that you know, sometimes it just drives me crazy because we don't ask questions. We don't question what we're taught. You know, it's like I have a statement I show in my classes that says it's not that we're uneducated. It's that we're educated just enough that we think we know everything and we don't question everything we're given. Right. And what's really true, we want to believe so much in what oh, yeah. these stories are. So, all right. So um, are you ready for our next one, Max? Let's do it. All right. So this is going to be, again, a very well-known artist, um, known in the industry, an educator, a trainer. I mean, holds a very, very high position. Okay. And this is their information on gray coverage. So let me set up the scenario. The client that this person is working on is um, split pigmentation. In other words, they have gray and then their natural level is like a level three. So they've got some gray showing, natural level three, and she's setting that up and she's trying to make this client a level five. Now a level five, is two levels lighter than a level three. I want you to hear what this person says about that. All right, Max, let me make sure I've got this all ready. I'm going to go to share screen. Uh, my audio is set up. So I'm going to go to this screen. And here we go. A really good example about somebody who's very, very, very dark naturally. Dark level, we're talking between a three and a four. Now, if I were to go and put a five in her base with 10 bullion per se, she would turn out to be like a bull with three. Why does that happen? So when guests are born naturally dark, I have found a lot of times they actually deposit harder than lighter. So in this circumstance that I'm doing Cassie's hair, today I'll be using a six level hair color, dropping in a little bit of five for anchorage. 
But the reality is if I went straight five, it would be literally a three. So let's talk about the 10 volume rule. When you're dealing with white hair versus gray hair, as you can see here around the side, white hair needs depth, not brightness. So 20 volume is gonna give continued brightness when we're dealing with gray coverage. So if the hair is gray, like let's say more salt and pepper, that's when you wanna go in the coverage of 20 volume. That way you get a little bit of added lift and some deposit. When you're dealing with white hair though, that 20 volume can be a bit aggressive and it can leave the hair looking translucent. So when you're dealing with white, I suggest using 10 volume, and when you're dealing with gray, I suggest using 20. Okay. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> all right. So, first of all, when someone says to me that people who have dark are born with dark hair, they take color darker. I want to know where you where is that scientific study? Because there is none. They deposit harder, Dennis. Yeah, they deposit harder. And I'm not sure what depositing harder means, right? <laughs> so I, I think what they're what they're trying to say is that if they try to make that a monochromatic color, one color, and it, it's at level five, even though that client is a level three. They say it'll look darker than a level three. Well, that's impossible that that would happen. I don't know how that's even possible that that would happen. So sometimes they put out, they speak with passion. They put out these blanket statements. And so imagine a new colorist. I want to learn everything I can about covering gray because even today in this industry, covering gray is still a toss up because there's so many opinions about it. So I'm going to say, well, people that are born with dark hair naturally, they take color harder. Now imagine, I mean, people run with that. Right. And now they're going to tell the consumer, well, you have naturally dark hair. You were born with dark hair, so you take color harder. So that's craziness. That's craziness. And there's no way that you could paint someone who is gray with a color that is three levels lighter than their natural pigment and make them look darker than what their natural level is. I don't know how that would be possible because we just talked about peroxide and we just talked about alkalinity. Max just shared that with you. So if I'm using a level six with 20 volume on a level three, guess what? I'm going to lighten that level three. There's no way, no way around it. I'm going to create warmth in that level three. So it's impossible for it to look darker than a level three. Max, am I off base or does that make sense? No, that totally makes sense. And in fact, I have a great visual that we can put up later that'll kind of help great. shed some light to this. Um, but what I would like to add real fast. I is, left it for you. I left it, is, it for you. You know that, right? Is that, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's one of something I'm passionate about. So you guys, there, so in our industry, number one, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to me that we don't have a standard language. Um, and I'm amping this up to talk about the subject of, gray hair and white hair. <laughs> so number one, there's only pigmented hair and non-pigmented hair. Okay. So <laughs> it's either got color or it's devoid of color. <clears throat> right. What I have found is if you have someone who is like salt and pepper, where it's like, you know, 50%, you know, salt and 50% pepper. When you see that pigmented hair and non-pigmented hair kind of next to each other, it tends to give an illusion that the hair is gray or right. that slaty color. But really what you're looking at is pigmented hair and white hair next to each other. Right. 
in basically pretty close to like equal proportions. Um, and then of course, as, as the percentage of non-pigmented hair increases, people see white <coughs> just because they're seeing more white or more salt. So the, the fact that this educator is kind of like talking about gray hair, which, you know, as opposed to, and then white hair as two different things. Hair is hair, <clears throat> first off. Yes, it is. And, you know, hair that is devoid of pigment is going to respond to color a specific way. And hair that is pigmented is going to respond to color a little differently. Right. But I mean, you know, I, I just, for a fact, know that you know, nine times out of 10, if you apply a hair color, a permanent hair color with 20 volume to white or non-pigmented hair, it will come out the level and tone that you put it on. Might not be cute. You know, if you put a seven ash and 20 volume, you know, on 100% white hair, it's probably going to be kind of gray blue, but you'll get a seven ash with 20 volume, just you know, minus the support that the shade needs. Right. So all this other stuff mm. is kind of, to me, in my opinion, and it's my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of convoluted. Yeah. And what it really breaks down to is, number one, learn, learn what pigmented hair does when you put a coloring product on it. Number two, learn how gray hair responds or white hair or see, now I'm doing it. The curse, the curse has been right. passed on to me, um, you know. Because it's like when you're dealing with non-pigmented and pigmented hair on the same head, you're actually de dealing with two different heads of hair. Right. Because right. one's going to do one thing, one's going to do something else. Exactly. And so if I can just tag on to that, Max, is that like in the laboratory, there have been certain times in my career where I've actually seen a hair strand growing out of the head where the last four inches are pigmented mm -hmm. and the first two inches are non-pigmented. But that's rare. I think the reason most people think that there's color is because when you bleach white hair, you will create a yellow tone. But that yellow tone is not necessarily coming from the pigment in the hair, it's because keratin, which still makes up the structure of the hair, when you lighten it, it does give you a yellow hue. And so I think that's where the misconception comes from. Yeah. You know, and so, <clears throat> and that's why if you've been to Formulation Foundations, I always say you have to figure the gray hair, because that's what we call it. You have to figure the gray hair into your color formulation. If you don't do that, you will have variations. You will have light strands that didn't seem to color well. You'll have pigmented strands that colored well. That's why when someone says we make double ends and all we do is take a level four and call it a level five, that's going to be just a reverse. That right. means I'm going to get coverage over the gray hair, but I'm going to get much more pigment on the pigmented hair that I desire. And so I'm still going to have highs and lows. So I think it's still, it's very confusing, but you know, that's why when this person says, you know, white hair does not need brightness. It needs depth. Well, it does need depth, but don't say it doesn't need brightness. Because what if I have somebody that has white hair and they want to look like an iris flower? <laughs> That's or, not... or Lucy Ricardo. Or Lucy Ricardo. So <clears throat> I think it's a, a point of understanding that. And see, we have a tendency as educators to throw out these rules. We, we spit them out and people go, oh, okay, that's the rule. There is no 10 volume, 20 volume rule for gray hair. In fact, I don't use 10 volume on gray hair. 
my clients, when they want to cover their gray, I always do it with 20 volume. Hallelujah. And that goes back to what Max explained in the first segment, which was about release of oxygen. Could I get coverage with 10 volume? I could to some degree, but there's not enough oxygen in 10 volume to give me what I call maximum dye development. By using 20, I will create maximum dye development because that's what they test with in the laboratories. I don't know whether you know that or not, but they test with 20 volume. They don't test with 10 volume. 20 volume is the standard. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the people that say 30 volume? Well, here's why I don't use 30 volume. 30 volume has more oxygen than I need. So if I mix it with my color and I start releasing oxygen, 30 volume is not only going to develop the dyes, it will do that. It will also degrade some of the dyes that I needed for my maximum dye development. And as a result, I will come up with a result that's brighter than I wanted what I wanted. And as that color fades off, it will have, for me, it'll, it'll look too bright. It won't have that richness to the tone. And 30 volume is not going to give you better penetration because if you have resistant hair you're working over, you need alkalinity to swell those cuticle layers so that that accepts the dye and the color much easier. I didn't mean to go on too long there, Max, but I just wanted to, to there, add that. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yes, Industry sir. standard when covering gray with permanent hair color, 20 volume should yes. do it and stay at a level eight or deeper. Absolutely. And that's because you need that much pigment in your color in order to give you what we call coverage. Okay. That's what you need. Mm. All right. So ready to go to the next one, Max? Ooh, we, yes. All right. <laughs> This is, a, uh, this is another educator from social media. Has a huge following. Most everyone. And the reason being is 40 volume packs a big punch for about 15 to 20 minutes and then it actually stop lifting before you get to where you need to go. All right. So here's the story. Mm. 40 volume, this is with bleach. They don't use 40 volume, they use 20 volume. I have no problem with that, that's fine. But what this person did is he just gave out a rule. And the rule they gave out was, if you mix 40 volume with your bleach, it's gotta punch the first 15 minutes and then it actually stops working so you will not you will not make your goal before you get to your goal that you're looking for. Now, <clears throat> it is true that <clears throat> the higher the volume of developer that I mix with a bleach powder, the more oxygen release I will create. That's absolutely correct. But a bleach, most powder bleaches, will stay active with what Ever volume of developer you're using for up to two hours mm -hmm. as long as it's moist. Yeah. But let's not even talk about two hours. Let's talk about an hour. You know, if I mix 20 volume with a bleach powder and I mix 40 volume with the bleach powder, my 40 volume will get me to pale yellow before my 20 volume will. I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. There is no way my 20 volume can outrun my 40, 40 volume. Max, go ahead. I saw oh, you okay. ready to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think too, you know, kind of going back to the, the first thing we talked about with the developers that uh, maybe we need to make clear is that when you have all of these different levels of developers, right? You have five volume, you know, 12 volume, 10 volume, 20 volume, whatever. Basically, guys, the higher the volume it equals the 
amount, it's not the amount, but it is how, like, help me out, Dennis. It's the amount of available oxygen. Yes. So five volume doesn't have as much available oxygen to release as 40 volumes. Right. You know, you guys, volume talks about an amount. Yes. You know, so it's like. It's like a percentage. In volume, yeah. yeah. In five volume, let's just say arbitrarily, it can release five oxygen units, whereas 40 volume can release 40 oxygen okay. units. So now, remember, we just made this up, okay? So don't think there's five yeah. oxygen yeah. units and five volume. This is, <laughs> this is this is totally arbitrary, you guys. I'm just trying to give you guys like a, like a really kind of a profile, easy so you can yeah, it's an example. Yeah. yeah, so it's true. Five. So ten. if you mix, go ahead, etc. So basically, whatever you're mixing with whatever volume is showing you the uh, the amount of, uh, you know, oxygen's invited to the party. Right. Yeah. If that makes sense. So like if you mix your, your color with 40 volume, you've invited 40, uh, 40 units of oxygen to the speed date, as opposed to you use a five, only five, five units show up. Right. Right. So, the, you know, and then everything in between there. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's fine to recommend, that you can get somebody to pale yellow without 40 volume and 40 volume, the higher the volume of developer, the more uh, aggression that's in your mixture. So, you know, just uh, that's, I'm fine with that. But to tell you that 40 volume yeah. stops working, that would scare the bejesus out of me because I can see one of my team members attending that class and coming back and she's got 40 volume on the head and it's been on for 50 minutes I go what's going on with the 40 volume <laughs> right. uh, I went to a class said it stopped working <clears throat> so I'm not worried about it it's going to stop working crazy right. crazy 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 all right so let's go to the next one here and here we go drop a level of gloss Anytime you are trying to combat warmth, you need to drop your level of gloss. Meaning, if you lifted to level seven, you need to be glossing with a level six. If you lifted to level eight, you need to be glossing to a level seven. And okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, here's what I get from that. Whatever level you lighten to you have to use a darker level in order to control the warmth well that's not necessarily true so if i'm if i want somebody to be it depends on what you're trying to create right you know i mean can you control warmth at the same level you can refine warmth so refine means yes we can we can adjust it slightly. We can't cancel. Everybody uses that word cancel. Now, and remember, you're not really canceling anything because you're merging those two colors together. <coughs> whatever level <coughs> the hair is with whatever level of color that you're using. Now, of course, if you want to make it as cool or as neutral as possible, you're not going to be able to totally neutralize it at the same level. We know that. So you would have to use something deeper. But this is an arbitrary rule, again, telling you if you're lightning, if you if you're lightning to a nine, you have to tone it with an eight. If you're lightning to an eight, you have to tone it with a seven. I got issues with that because that's not a rule. That's mm -hmm. that's a personal opinion. Um, if that was the case, then Pale, you would never be able to make a color at pale yellow, would you? And the two colors that we make at pale yellow, which are the most popular colors today in blonding, is we make platinum and we make ultra pale mm -hmm. ash. We make pewter gray. Those are the colors that we're making at pale yellow. So if this was true, you wouldn't be able to make those colors. 
Right. Max, what do you think about that I, rule? <laughs> I mean, oh, it makes my head hurt. Dennis. Yeah. Um, again, I think that if you really are, you know, well founded in your stages of lightning, and you know, you take the hair to where you want to go for your end result, then you should be able to formulate at the level you want in yes. order to get your end result. If you're having to like lighten something um, too high in order to just cover it back up, number one, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot because right. you're not going to have the support that you need. You know, the difference between like a seven and an eight, you know, an eight's a yellow orange and a seven is an orange. So you're already, you know, missing. Eliminated something. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it may look great the day you do it, but how's it going to look, you know, 10 shampoos from then? Right. Five shampoos. Yeah. I think the big confusing thing is we talk about covering, we talk about underlying. Mm -hmm. So we think there's something under there there's not there's not if you lighten hair to a level eight what we call a level eight or you lighten it to gold and you neutralize it or you use a neutral shade of blue violet on that gold you're marrying those tones together and you should create an acceptable looking natural neutral level eight Okay. If you don't have enough coolness in your formula, you don't have to use a darker formula. All you have to do is add the missing coolness. Right. <clears throat> so if I'm using a level eight gloss on a level eight that I've lightened, and I want my level eight to totally control it, it's not about how, what level I'm using now. It's about what are the colors that are in the color I'm using. Which goes back to what we've been preaching since episode one is doing your die outs. Right. So that you actually know what you're working with. Exactly. You know, what's the difference between a, you know, an O9N and an O9V and an O9P and an O9NA. Right. And you'll be surprised, mm -hmm. you know, nine times out of 10, you know, just because a color line says one thing doesn't necessarily mean that's what's, you know, in the tube or bottle. That's so right. this gives you even, it, it actually just gives you more control over your end result. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let's go on to the next clip. <coughs> Excuse me. Doing that, you're going to be able to knock out a lot more warmth. All right, and that's the, the end other of that thing piece. that always helps is upping your developer in these situations. So let me go into detail a little bit about developer. Developer is the gas that gets you to where you want to go. It is not the thing that actually does the lifting in the hair. <laughs> well, Max, that blows what you said completely out of the water, dude. Guess I should just go retire. Because <clears throat> this expert says it's not what does the lifting. So, <clears throat> again, please, please, please. Test this yourself. Don't believe us. Okay, test it. People are out there saying that peroxide doesn't do the lifting. It does the lifting. It is the workhorse. All the color does is create, it's the engine. Color just gives you the engine. Okay, peroxide your gas. Do not diminish the effectiveness and the danger 
of peroxide. Mm -hmm. Because in the color process, peroxide is really the most damaging part of the formula. I know, I know, I know. You're watching this right now. You may be a trainer and you're going, that's not what I teach. I teach them ammonia is terrible. Well, ammonia is not great, but it's a necessary thing in order for hair color to function. All right, don't even say ammonia. Let's call it alkalinity. Okay, I'll make you happy. But all of the alkamines are still somehow related to ammonia. They're all chemical cousins. So I don't care. You say tomato, I say tomato, whatever. The fact is that you need an alkaline to create an environment. Without that, peroxide can't do its job. <clears throat> but the side effect of peroxide is that it punches holes in the cuticle. It splits the cysteine bonds and creates cysteic acid in the hair. And it splits disulfide bonds as well, which weakens the structure of the hair. That's what peroxide does. So, whoa, I got on a soapbox here. Because <clears throat> I know now that people are posting rabbit trails and saying, well, they said this, you know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> oh. I already know I'm going to be paying the price for saying 40 oxygen units. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so anyway, look, it, um, the purpose of all of this is to just let you know that it, this is not, we're not blowing smoke here. We're not, we're not trying to, we're not trying to clip things together that create a different picture. We're actually giving you the actual words from the actual people that are actually regarded as experts. They're also self-proclaimed as experts. And this is the information that is out there. You may have never heard it until here, that's okay. Some of you may have heard it before and maybe hopefully today we've given you some clarity on it. <clears throat> because I really believe that's our biggest challenge in our business is that people not being grounded in what we do. I really believe that. I believe if, if we were grounded, that was a part of our initial education, it would make us, number one, so much better at our craft. It would give all of us much more success. And it would prevent so much confusion. And a person could actually graduate from beauty school, come to work in a salon, and work with the same language that they learned in beauty school. And oh my God, we could actually finally communicate to each other. What a concept. Who knew? <clears throat> so hopefully you found this beneficial. Max, did we miss anything today? <laughs> I mean, I feel like we were pretty darn thorough. I think we were too. I think we were too. Um, we hope you find this information beneficial. Uh, we hope you had fun. This is a fun thing. You know, you've noticed my little chipmunk laughing and everything at the end. Because uh, it's funny. We say stuff. <clears throat> Sometimes it's not actually true. We may or may not have meant to say that. Or it might be something that we really believe. And so, as you've heard me say so many times, uh, if you are just, if you are working, a working hairdresser in the salon, I believe it's important for you to do your due diligence, to seek knowledge that will help you be better at what you do. If you are an educator or a trainer and you are out there influencing the way hairdressers do color, influencing what hairdressers understand about color, it's your responsibility the moment you either gave yourself a title as an expert or your company gave you a title as an expert, <coughs> it's your responsibility to make sure that your information is on point. On point. So that people aren't taking the information and going out there and being more confused than they were before. Um, I believe that will give you longevity. If you really love education, it will give you longevity as a trainer because people will trust you. That's one of the things that as our company, we value the trust that the people who follow us, 
that they, they give us. We value that trust so much that we know it's our responsibility to make sure that our information is as accurate as it possibly can be. We do that for you because we want you to be better than you are today, tomorrow. We want you to have an easier pathway than we had. We want you to be more successful than those who came before you, than those of us who came before you were in this industry. We want that for you. We also believe it's our responsibility to help raise the bar on our industry. I love this business. I, I you know, I, I can't imagine <clears throat> having not been in the beauty business. It has afforded me so many amazing journeys. I have met so many amazing people. I have learned so much. And now I have to fulfill a promise I made to my mentor who said, work very hard to make sure that you leave the industry in a better place than it was on the day you got there. And we work hard to do that. And uh, I'm so grateful to have colleagues like Max who has that same belief system. And we want to make sure you understand that that was our sole purpose here on this program and on all the programs that we do as a company. So listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, <clears throat> you can subscribe right here. We love it. Thank you so much for all of you that have subscribed. Thank you so much for all of you who have followed us, who have sent us those positive comments. We totally appreciate it. You can also follow us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. You're also invited to watch, uh, to follow our Facebook page, which is Guru Nation. And we invite you to also log on to our website, which is www.gurunation.net and check out our educational portfolio. We have pre-recorded webinars that you can download and watch. We also have virtual classrooms that we do here on our virtual platform. And <clears throat> hopefully once COVID subsides to some degree, we will be able to do some live programs uh, throughout the country. You can also go to our gallery and check out some of the programs that we've done in the past, give you a little bit of insight into that. Uh, I'm going to tell you some things we're planning. You know, Max and I are working very hard on right now, planning the first Rabbit Trails live stream. And so if you love Rabbit, Rabbit Trails, if you've shared it with your friends, if you think we have, you know, if we think we're effective, if you think it's a good show for your friends to watch, reach out to us, let us know, and then we will set up the date for a live stream where you can actually be online with us you can ask questions, we can interact with each other, and it'll be just a great, fun experience. Also, we have a new show coming up called Say What? And you should see that out in the next week or two, <coughs> where again, we take information that's delivered on social media platforms, and we give you our spin on that information so that uh, you can hear from us as well. Uh, so. It's been fun, Max. Here we are. Episode nine. Can you believe we've already done nine episodes of this show? I mean, this became, you know, this was like the product of one Instagram message that right. I sent you. <laughs> and now it's like its own series. Yes. And so we're, we're loving it. So, gosh, well, next episode, episode 10, we should do something to celebrate or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we uh, look forward to seeing you all on episode 10, our next, our next program. But in any case, it has been a wonderful day. I've enjoyed it. Max, thank you so much, my friend. It's Dennis. always great sharing time with you. Same. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. And so, oh, 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 okay. There it is. Our ride is here, brother. Mm. <laughs> I'll see you in the clearing. Listen, everybody. Right. Thank you all so much. From my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out of here. Max, how about you? Thanks, yep, everybody. Out. Bye, guys. See you Have all soon. One. You too. Bye-bye.